Hey guys, I'm Janet on occasion, and today we are playing Necromunda Hired Gun. So this will be a new series we've gone for a while, probably. Uh, although I actually have no idea how long. I have no idea how long this game is. Um, but I've got a key for it. Thank you, Focus Home Interactive, for sending me that. And uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna crack on with it. So I do have a few campaigns uh, in progress. Um, for me testing recordings and whatnot, so we'll go ahead and delete one. Uh, we'll delete this one, because this is the one I've made the least progress in, so I care about it the least. Alright, let's do it. The Guilders run the Underhive. Without the Merchant's Guild, there's no order to life down here. No one to stop things unraveling completely. You're thinking there's no order down here anyway. But you just don't see it. Order is what every ganger down here is looking for. Just an order they can change. One where they can get to be top dog. The big boss man. Not just a pro laboring away, toiling for house high in the throne. Order down here is different. Nobody wants the enforcers, or worse, coming down here, trying to make things the way they are up in Hive City. So we all follow the Gilders' rules. Without them, it all breaks down. No one kills a Gilder unless they're truly dangerous or truly desperate. And the truly desperate are the most dangerous of all. That's why I think we can help each other out. We're going to earn ourselves that bounty for taking down whoever killed Maro Virax, and we're going to put things back the way they should be. You see, we're agents of order, the likes of us, even if we do get to sow a little strife along the way. You're in? Trust me. Well, all right, chapter one. A member of the Merchant's Guild has been murdered, and there is a huge bounty on the outlaw responsible. I don't know why whenever it finishes loading, it always flashes out, but... <laughs> oh, well. It doesn't really change much. Uh, so you and two fellow hired guns are in pursuit of the outlaw, and believe you know where to find them. Attack in concert to capture the outlaw and claim the bounty. So this is a first-person shooter, and uh, it is story-driven, and uh, we do have a pet dog. Hey, doggo. Who's a good boy? Who's a good boy? I mean, that's the main that's the main notes of the game. But ah, uh... oh, right, yeah, we need to choose who the heck we are. Um, uh, this this looks like the girl from Cyberpunk that um is on every single th uh, thumbnail about Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven. Um, let's see, and that's that's Aloy <laughs> from Horizon Zero Dawn. Uh, not sure who she is. Um, or her actually. Um, so there's some fun characters for sure. Some fun looking ones. I don't think it really makes any difference. I don't think they all have different uh uh I don't think there's all like different voice actors or anything, and I don't think you ever really see your character. But we'll go with Aloy. Why not? Let's go with Aloy. I saw the new demo uh gameplay for the new Horizon Zero Dawn. Not Zero Dawn, Horizon, whatever the hell it's called, Western Wonderland, I don't know. And uh it looked cool. So we'll go with the one that looks like Aloy. Uh and I'm just gonna go in normal mode because I'm old. Simple as that. I don't have the reflexes these days to uh to to play um First person shooters, like really difficult. I play them for leisure. That's right. I play them for leisure. Can't can't push myself too hard. I'm old. Okay, leave me alone. Oh, down we go. Is it? Yeah. You sure? Positive. The black serpents are holed up in there. You sure about this? Sure they're in there or sure about getting in dawn? Black, it's just a few eshers. And then, payday. And then, payday. Okay. But be ready for anything. We are. They can't defend all the approaches. 
or coming from both sides and from the dome. <coughs> So really cool vistas. Of course, Necromunda is in the Warhammer 40,000 world, so you can't really have that without a big spooky gothic cathedral in the middle of a, you know, a underground planet-wide slum, you know. All the usual trimmings. You two. This level. I'm heading down. You and the Hound, eh? Yeah. Okay, this is it. Let's go. I can see the sentries. Wait until I'm on the ground, then take out as many as you can. Let them know they're surrounded. Also, when we will have a 40,000 without uh, tiny little statues of, uh, of death uh, all over every single lift. I mean, seriously, what is up with that? Look, look. Little, little, little statues of death just everywhere. Just hanging out. Very cool. So, uh, yeah, uh, uh, bits of statue down here. All sorts of them. Some of them have been dolled up a bit, because, uh, you know, this is the Undercity and everything's punk, which is uh, a whole lot of fun. So what I do like about this game uh, is the gunplay so is good is fun. It is Asher territory. Uh, and also the mobility involved is fantastic. Um, if you've ever played something like Titanfall, it actually feels very similar to play, because, uh, well, like here for instance, I can jump and then dodge in the air, which is really fun. Or you can dodge left and right, slide, dodge backwards, and uh, you can wall run as well. And uh, you can also do the fun sort of wall run, jump, wall run, jump lark. See? Isn't that great? I love it. Uh, also, we are supposed to go down there. These little beacons that you see um, are the general sort of, um, uh, this is where you go to carry on the mission. They tend to be in a bunch of the levels, and they always point the way. Which it does actually describe that to you at some point. But, uh, there's also, you know how, how in Doom, there's a bunch of secrets? Whoops. I bounced straight off that wall. You know in Doom, there's a bunch of secrets? Well, that applies here too. There's a bunch of treasure chests. I'm actually really impressed with the, uh, uh, just game design. Like, the level design so far. Oop. Aha! I managed to get up. I did not realise I'd be able to get straight up here. Last time I had to shimmy back that way and then this way, but I managed to fluke out. But yeah, so there's a bunch of um, treasures around the place. And here, it didn't encourage me to come up here, but... Now I've come up here, and I'm, I'm back where I need to be, but... I managed to get some credits out of the deal, because I found some credits up there. Isn't that fun? I think it's fun. So yeah, this is where I was supposed to be going. Don't think there's anything down here, though. I don't think I'm getting there. But anyway, so yeah, it rewards you for exploration, which I really like. Open this rust damn door! Yes. E to negotiate. <laughs> Some good negotiation there. Um, but yeah, computers are people, because um, in Warhammer 40k, the Imperium doesn't trust uh, AI or computers or robots or things. Always gotta have a human element. Uh, unless it's something very basic, like a button to open a door. Anything that requires sort of um, calculation. It has to have has to have a person plugged in there. And life is cheap in 40k, so you know. Like real cheap. I'm in. Let's do it. See you at the prize. And these are the chests I was talking about. It's gonna tell you how to find these chests, you see. But there will be a bunch of treasure. If you hold tab, it'll actually say in the top left, treasure chests, one out of five. So, I haven't actually found all of the treasure chests yet in this level, and I've played this level a few times, but um, I'm still missing one. See, gunplay is pretty good. And uh, you can also stab people right up. And similarly to Doom, it's all contextual, depending on what angle you come at them from, what sort of enemy it is. It's always different. Plenty. Keep going. Oh. I think she got a bit poorly. Uh, okay, so. Moving on. So that went well. That went well. And now it's uh, saying to call my Cyber Mastiff. Hey, buddy. He sort of teleports in, which is very strange. But uh, anyway, go attack them. Good boy. Thanks, boy. 
Oh, he's a good boy. Very heavy metal. Was that you? Where are you? Third level. There's someone else down here, and it ain't no Esha. That's not me. Stay alert. Excellent. So, um, our our partners seem to have found someone. There seems to be someone else nearby, causing a ruckus. It's not us or them. So, um, yep, there's other trouble afoot. Alright. Cheeky little sods. <laughs> good boy. Very satisfying. Uh, so the dog's a good boy. And, uh, oh, oh, it's another tutorial. Oh, I see what it wants. It wants to show me that you press F, you can get your health back. Because we have, uh, we have some, um, uh, little med packs or whatever, some little stim packs. But also, if you do damage to people, you gain health back. Which is awesome. Cheeky. Okay. Where are the enemies at? I think I found some. Hey, who is that? Come back here. Stab, stab, stab. Good job. Nice. But yeah, the gunplay is really fun. Um, it definitely gives you the advantage, you know? Like, the enemies are pretty squishy. But you feel awesome for just killing thousands of them. And it can be difficult. It actually can be difficult. I've definitely felt a lot of pressure in a few spaces. Like, you've got to be quite smart about moving around. What's also really nice is at some point we will unlock a double jump. And we will also get a grappling hook, which is incredibly fun just to zip around the place with. You can also use it to take shields off people, which we'll see once we get to level 2. Other than that, I don't know what else we can unlock. There might be a bunch of other stuff that I haven't found yet, but, you know, with wall running, double jumping, dodging in the air, you can get around real quickly, which is really fun. And yeah, it's all pretty fluid. It's all pretty fluid. Oof. And yeah, the contextual uh, melee. Oh, it's just brutal. Also, you don't take damage while you're killing people horribly in melee, which is very satisfying as well. So provided you can get close to someone, you know, you can you can take them out pretty, uh, pretty cleverly, which is really fun. Big, big fan of it, I must say. Oh, you know what? I hadn't found, uh, like I said, I hadn't found another chest yet, but this is actually a room I hadn't really explored a huge amount. This could be where the last one is. There does seem to be a platform up there. So maybe that's where it is. Because, yeah, this looks promising, actually. Ooh. Well, nothing. Are you kidding me? This is perfect. Oh, this is perfect for a chest. What are you playing at, game? But anyway, you can get around. You can really get around. It's pretty great. It is pretty wonderful. I, I love a game with good mobility options. You know, it's good to be able to get around and explore. It just, it feels good. You feel really powerful for doing so. So now, so uh, Escher are all the women, by the way. All the men running around, the Goliath. So two different gangs. One is exclusively female and one is exclusively male. Which I find quite amusing because, uh, because, you know, just general punk women fine, but the men, rather than just being unique for the fact that it's all men, they're unique because they're all a bunch of, like, steroid crazed, <laughs> like, toxically masculine people. So it's a nice juxtaposition we get with these two, you know? Okay, good stuff. Uh, who is that? Definitely someone down there that I just saw. Oh, yeah, here we go. So there is quite a lot of recoil on guns, but you can customize them, which is pretty damn good too. Big fan of that. Okay, you know what? I'm going to stab you up. Take that, you lunatic. Alright, good. So, make a good progress. And they aren't getting many hits on us. Uh, also, you can see down the bottom, we got that blue bar in the bottom left. So that blue bar is our shields. Oh, I thought you were dead, my bad. Uh, the blue bar is our shields. 
And the red bar is our health. I know, crazy, isn't it? Red bar being health. So original. Uh, so, while I'm over here... Boop. Here's another chest. Like I said, I found four of them. So, uh, we'll be getting at least those. Alright, good stuff. So, I've got to say, I love the setting um, for Necromunda. Like, it's very... Um... Whoops. I'm a little bit concerned about getting up back up here now. There we go. Girl wall running. Um, so yeah, I uh, I like the setting so far. You know, it's very very Necromunda, but uh, you know, very typical Necromunda, all sort of like factories and heavy metal and molten metal and. But it's done very well. It's rendered very nicely, and there is enough sort of uh, variety. I find the different areas, including how one might get around, because I could have got over here from above, but I chose not to, which is probably a mistake, actually, because definitely had easier times coming in from the bottom where I could see everyone. But I'm getting cornered like this. But uh, I thought I'd mix it up. Kind of wish I hadn't. Should have gone with my gut. Every other time I come from above, but anyway. So yeah, it's pretty cool, though. It's pretty cool, because as you can see, I could have come in from over here, Like you can actually tackle situations slightly differently. I know it doesn't seem particularly advanced, but like, like, oh yeah, there's a... There's a balcony to one side, fine. But, there's a lot of little details. Like, if we go into this area, hole in the floor, I could have jumped up into that. There's a little window here where I could have shot that woman that we just killed. More little treasures hidden around, which is lovely. And also, if I was down here, you can see this area you can get into by sliding underneath these little areas. So I could have got out of that firefight from there. So, pretty fun. Also, hang on. Um. Nah, there's no chest down here, is there? Can't be. Can't be, surely. What the hell? Heavily armed too. Nah. I'm gonna hold him here until. Nah, I'm not gonna risk it. I don't wanna, don't wanna die like an idiot. Where are you? Leto, what the hell is going on? So clearly, our partner's having some problems. Some serious problems. What the? Oh. <laughs> These things are little checkpoints. So you can restart the mission out, then we can go back to the HQ with them, we can buy stims. Uh, with credits that you find... Credits can be useful. You can buy new weapons and augments and a bunch of other stuff, which we'll get to. So there's a lot of... Um, there's a lot of different play styles. You can even sort of go with um, like a melee build if you want. Because that's the thing. You can't actually melee everybody. That's just for some people. That's just for some, not everybody. Oh, hello. So, if anyone has shields, you're not going to be able to melee them. You have to break the shields first. And also, shields tend to survive a certain number of hits, rather than um, sort of a certain amount of damage on the enemy. At least that's what I've noticed. It seems that machine guns lower enemy shields way quicker than a shotgun does, which I think is really nice. So it does actually sort of um, encourage you to have diversity when it comes to the weapons that you hold. I need help down here. Now! You can't handle a few extra. Can't get up What's there now. What's going on, Leto? What is going on, Leto? It's not. Also, I love that Necromunda appears to have a Yorkshire. It's, uh, it's very fun. <laughs> Go to Who hell. knew, right? Who knew? I need it. Down. Let off. Let off. Well, amazingly, there's no uh should have done oh, so now. Knew it. Always work alone. It's a giant glossy baby! Hello, wax baby. So, this is an Ogryn. A bit stroppy. Another thing that's quite nice is aiming down sight. You can actually still move around quite quickly, which is good. It doesn't like slow you right down for doing that. There's still a lot of emphasis on being nice and quick, which I really like. A little Laz cannon fire. Whoop. A lot of them blowing up. 
which um, also rather nice. Sorry about that. All right, so uh, yeah, so what I was trying to say before the cutscene is, uh, I've explored all up there. I couldn't find another um, like all up that way, and yeah, I couldn't find another chest up there, which seems really strange because that looks perfect for a chest. Unless I missed it, but it took me hours to get up there. It's a real nuisance. Probably because there's nothing up there, but maybe there is. Maybe there is, and I haven't found it. That is definitely an option. So, what we got over here? Oh, I thought you were dead. You're not dead. Jumpy baby. Oh, hello. Oh, hello, baby. Okay, we always got him. We got him. They got a big old head, which is uh, jolly handy, I gotta say. Okay, good stuff. Oh. There's certain shields that make people slightly invisible, which is uh, sometimes a little bit scary if you don't notice them. See, look at that. Look at her, all invisible. Yeah, if you aim for the head with those, uh, they got little, little things on their back that blow up. But uh, they're a head height, so you get headshots and they explode. It's really quite, really quite nice of them to do that. And here we go. Another loot chest. So, uh, I don't think we need to equip any of that. So what is nice, you can pick up items, but you can also equip them on the fly. But uh, anything that you don't want is still good loot, because it gets sold at the end of the mission if you don't want it. And that is rather nice. I'm actually going to use a stim pack just because I'm doing fine. Okay, good. As you can see, shield's keeping it going. And now we can kill her in melee. It's pretty brutal. Alright, good stuff. guess that was that other guy that uh, our partner saw, huh? So, mission complete. So, here we go. This is, uh, is going to happen after every mission. So, this isn't actually our um, inventory as such. Uh, so, this is basically our, our sort of um, our wardrobe, almost. So, this is all of the stuff that we have, but we're not going to take everything into each mission. So you can stock up on things, and then depending on the mission, you might not bring certain things, you know? Which, uh, I'm not sure quite what'll, what'll make us think, okay, we want to go with this sort of build, this mission, and a different kind of build the next. But the fact that we can sort of collect um, things of various uses is rather nice. So I quite like that. So we've got a couple of stub guns. I don't think we really need them. We've already got a, uh, a decent pistol. So we're good without that. But we did have a lot of fun with this striker, so we'll definitely be bringing one of these. Let's bring one of those, although I think um, that one's the same as the one we got equipped, so maybe that was pointless. That's got a scope, but it has almost no accuracy, so it really doesn't matter, and no range. So the scope is just going to be more of a hindrance than anything else. Uh, okay, special, nothing, heavy, nothing, suit. Uh, 52, I think, ours is 53. Yeah, so we'll sell these, they're worth a fair bit of money. So, good finds. Items, so these ones... Uh, little trinkets that we're going to bring. Uh, I think you can bring three of them. Uh, and we have a, you know, four. We have a choice of four. So we can put... Okay, it's all loot bonus then, huh? So loot bonus plus six, plus seven, and critical chance. So I won't bother bringing this one. We can just sell that one. And Archaeotech. So this is going to be additional uh, damage or, like, uh, I think status effects and different, like, elemental damage and stuff that we can add to our weaponry. 
So rather fun. So you can see it's just damage 0 to 4. So it's just an extra 0 to 4 damage um, that we can add. So we'll bring one of them. And then charms. These are lucky charms that we attach to our weaponry. And they give us uh, various chances of various other things. So here, when we kill an enemy, our juju attracts luck and allows you to get extra credits when you kill an enemy. So we attach that to our weapon. We kill anything with it. We have a 2% chance to get, uh, I think it's between, what was it, 15, 70, something like that. Um, and that's another 2% chance. These are all kind of rubbish, though. 2% chance to get 63 and 78. All right, that's a bit better. And that'll be basically all of our weapons done. So that'll do. The rest we can sell. Uh, we're going to be churning through this this uh, this stuff pretty quickly, I think. Like, all of this is going to be obsolete by the end of the next uh, the next mission anyway. So, you know, there's, there's a fair bit of looting. Uh, provided we can actually find any ruddy chests. But we do find a lot of trinkets and things just on various corpses. So, should be good. So here we're going to get an extra 4,166. And here we actually get rated on a bunch of stuff, and we can replay um, different um, uh, uh, levels, basically. So if we have a low rating, we can try again, right? So kill style, class B. So I don't really know what determines kill style. I think if you kill people while wall running and things like that, I think there's like a hidden checklist of ways you've killed people. I think it's through variety. But who knows? It could just be if you kill people very quickly while they start shooting you or something. I, I really don't know. Um, what determines this, but I tend to get a B most of the time, it seems. Uh, treasure chest, 4 out of 5, so that's class A. And then medical and maintenance fees. Every time you die, you're, like, revived, but it costs you money, so you, you lose out on your fee uh, by doing so, which is kind of good, I think, because I, I, I think there is a limit to how many times you can be revived, but also it is nice that you sort of get revived automatically and you don't have to worry about replaying the level. You can just carry on but you've been punished for having died. So you're still punished, but you're not having to replay a huge chunk of the level. Because I've only played the first two levels so far. The second level, it, the first time I went through it, it took me an hour. It's a massive level. And to be punished, to either, I mean, going back to a checkpoint, fine, I guess, but like that just feels a bit annoying, just having to retread the same area. So no, they just take it out your fee, which I think is a really elegant solution that just keeps the pace up. So you're not having to just keep um, replaying areas. So I really like that. I like how it does it. Uh, but yeah, Class A in total. And there's Imperial Taxes. I'm not sure what that is, exactly. But anyway, Martyr's End. Martyr's End is the largest settlement in uh, this part of the Underhive, centred on the ruins of an ancient Imperial shrine, and situated between several ruined industrial domes, prized by the gangs of House Orlok and House Goliath. The settlement is inhabited by an assortment of settlers and traders, while prospectors, bounty hunters, and members of local underhive gangs pass through in large numbers. Uh, as in all larger settlements, the guilders expect those who come to Martyr's End to set aside their rivalries and abide by the rules of the underhive, such as they are. Surprisingly, it works, for the most part. All right, then. All right. Who's there? Oh, you know me. Damn. Jericho. Where am I? Martyr's End. Martyr's End? Martyr's End. Beyond Thorian's Dome, beyond the bad zones of Delta Seven. Far from where you want to be, I'll wager. But a better place than you'd be in otherwise, I can assure you. Better than I would be if I hadn't met you. I saved your life. Feels like you did a great job. I suppose it all depends on what you imagine being dead feels like. You seem keener than you should be on finding out. Enough of the riddles, Spire Boy. What happened? <laughs> There's time for all that later. You're gonna hurt yourself straining like that? Remember, you only just made it this far. I'm gonna leave you with my friend here. There's a watering hole right outside, the Blessed Temple, they call it. You can find me there when you're ready. Ready for what? That's the fun part. Finding out. Well, alright then, so this is the hub 
uh, sort of the hub area, the sort of between missions, whether it be story missions or side missions that we can do, we can take on a bunch of just random contract jobs, which is interesting. I'm very interested to see what that looks like. I haven't seen it yet. But the fact you can take on random uh, you know, missions as a hired gun, I think it's pretty great. I think it would be a bit disappointing if this game was called Hired Gun and you couldn't be a hired gun. But uh, we can be a hired gun, which is fun. Uh, so this is really fun. That's clearly designed like an eye test. But it says, I die, serve, honor, loyalty, emperor. It's just... It's just all propaganda. Everything written in this game is propaganda. It's wonderful. Also, with 40k, um, there's this thing where basically no one knows how technology works or how to build it anymore. It's just everywhere. Uh, so the idea of this guy being a doctor who also specializes in attaching robotic body parts and he can do that, even though he's not even showing just basic hygiene uh, in anything. It looks like some crazy medieval, you know... Barbary surgeon or something, you know, it's it's horrific, you know, it's absolutely horrific. But that's technology, and this is the guy who's closest to being a doctor. Who are you? What is this place? I'm Malakachin. You may call me Malak. I'm a chirurgeon, and this is my surgery. You're lucky to be here. Damn, a rogue doc. If you prefer, yes. What did you do to me? Nothing. I didn't have to. Well. Maybe a little more than I had to. That's a most impressive set of bionics. They would have been a pleasure to work with, but for all the bleeding flesh getting in the way. Thanks. I'm sure there used to be more of it. Your friend is right. Cal Jericho? He's not my friend. Well, he was right. You should have died. It's only those bionics of yours that saved you. But still, there was a lot of damage. It will take you a little while to heal. And a little while to get used to the changes. What? A few adjustments. An internal reservoir. A cerebral implant. You'll find they're all improvements once you get used to them. A cerebral implant? Where the hell did that come from? From your friend, Cal Jericho. He's not my friend. Oh, I'd say he is now. These bionics, once you have healed, they will allow you to do incredible things. But there might be a few adjustments I need to make. Nothing works first time. Not when you're working with materials like these, anyway. You should come back and see me when you're ready to find out what you're really capable of. Alright, so we have uh, 8,149 credits and uh, just a bunch of stuff we can, uh, we can upgrade. As you can see, plenty. Plenty. So let's get um, strength booster. This will allow us close combat configuration, which isn't something I've played with yet. But the idea of running around uh, kicking people's torsos off it sounds fun. I'd quite like to kick someone's torso off their legs. That sounds hilarious. Um, in real life, I'd love to be able to do that. Non fatally, obviously. But, you know, as a, as a practical joke, I think that would be great. So, another adaptation of the character's internal reservoir, allowing it to divert additional power to certain pistons in the bionic arms and legs to temporarily create greater driving force. Close combat configuration is enabled, allows the bounty hunter to uh, deadly strike enemies with his knife or his foot. Or her. Get it right. Uh, that'll increase our HP, which is boring. Uh, we also want the Auger Array, because this can be very useful. It allows you to do a sort of scan of the environment, which even shows treasure, so we'll be able to see treasure chests and things. Um, if you remember to do it. But pretty pretty handy. If you suspect there might be treasure somewhere, you can just go ahead and use the Auger Array, which is rather good. Um, perfect Aim is like an aim bot, which is very funny. Uh, let's do the Vocal Implant. I don't think we really need it now, but that'll actually give us additional income from secondary missions which is quite cool that you can do that. And with the vocal implant as well. This implant is usually employed by those who um, use their voice to project commands or proclamations. It allows the bounty hunter to influence people more easily, however, to get better bounties on contracts. So we can just sweet talk our, <laughs> our way through situations because we have augmented our voice, which is just beautifully Warhammer 40k, you know? Um, I won't bother with perfect aim, I don't think. Um, that's, that's like a bullet time thing, heightened senses. But, eh. 
Maybe I'll we'll hang on to the rest of our money for a second. Actually, Haywire Pulse is very useful. Uh, another adaptation of the character's internal reservoir. Talk about it like our power reservoir, basically. I like to divert additional power to a small Haywire Pulse generator. Sends a pulse of electromagnetic energy that short, uh, short circuits many energy systems. Deactivates enemy refractor fields or stuns opponents. So if we get surrounded, we can use this. I have to remember how to use it because it's, yeah, it's a pain. Because you have to hold middle mouse button and then you, you go to it. So we need to quickly, quickly go for that. It's obviously the strength booster. So does that really just give us a knife if we use that? That's an interesting approach. Huh. Anyway, we can't use them now because, you know, friendly area. Uh, but we need to go test something. So we have been given a bunch of augmentations. You know, partly in an attempt to save our life. But partly, I guess, to um, slightly leave us indebted to, um, to that guy. Um... Anyway, we'll get to that conversation. So the Gladiatorium is an arena where you can freely test your new weapons and augmetics. Try out your new module maglev coil here. So, what's that mean? We have double jump now. Hooray! And it wants us to come up here. Beautiful. Beautiful. And this is an arena to test things out, so... Yeah, there are bad guys kicking about. Lovely. And strength booster. Wow, we can go real quick when we do that. Woohoo! <laughs> Alright, yeah, I quite like it. But by god, we run quick with this thing. Lasts a long time, too. Yeah, that lasts a long time. Oh, wow, I'm really looking forward to that. And also the Orgo Ray does, does that. I know, it looks, looks horrible, but important stuff does light up. We're just not seeing anything important. And again, it's on a timer. And you can see on the bottom left, above the um, the the mastiff and uh, the three F there for our stim packs, you can see those those little cooldown icons up there, which is handy. More money, I'll have that. Cool, thanks. And now we need to talk to the bartender. Hey there, wild snake. I like you. You must be able to read the sign. No. What does it say? It says patrons only. But you don't need to worry about that. You figured it right out. You must be a psychic. But I won't go telling anyone you're a here. here you go. Wild snake. How much? Your friends already got it covered. Elmo's teeth. What is this? He's not my friend. Definitely psychic. That might be the quickest I've seen anybody work that out. But either way. Your drink is covered. You should go and see him. He's right over there. And hey, if you ever want to know what's really going on around here, come back and see me. Thanks. What's your name? Just call me the Wild Snake Priestess. All right. So um, I like the I like the Spider Man um, motif on the bar. That's fun. Uh, also, yeah, the fact that we're psychic because we could read that. It does make sense, because that was definitely written by a doctor, and everyone knows that that is impossible to read. Um, so yeah, yeah, we're definitely psychic. Must be. Also, I like this little introduction to the bartender. We can actually... Show me what you can do for me. We can actually change our skins here. How fun is that? I don't know how this even remotely um, comes into effect, because like we can never see ourselves anyway, so I don't really get why it matters. But uh, we get to pick... A, uh, a look. I don't know if it'll change how people react to us or anything. But we actually have Gilda stuff from DLC. I don't know if I got this because they uh, um, cause this is a pre-order bonus. Possibly. Could be that. Could be. I got given a key so, you know, it, it always has that sort of stuff in it, doesn't it? But, uh, yeah. So there we go. That's, that's me. I'll be a Gilda. Why not? It is the snappiest, I think. So we can change how we look there. Uh, also, um, yeah, we got introduced to the fact that this guy cannot be trusted. Like, other characters know not to trust him. And the bartender always knows the most. It's the bartender. They have... They, they listen to every conversation. That's a that's a trope we can get behind. So, ready to talk? Presumably. About how you nearly got me killed. About how I saved your life. And Batel and Leto? Well... No. I knew they weren't up to it. Always work alone. I should have stuck to that. Now, tell me, what happened up there? 
That Escher gang you wanted us to take down, there was someone else with them. Yes, I think so. Who? The one who killed Virax? Maybe. I mean, I think so. The Black Serpents are working with an outlaw, a very dangerous outlaw, who seems to be calling himself the Silver Tavern. You knew he was there? No, I didn't. But the Black Serpents are his muscle. I figured they might give us a few leads. I didn't think whoever killed Virax would be crazy enough to still be hanging around here. So you thought you'd dangle some bait? No, nothing like that. Besides, you were quick enough to take me up on the deal. Maro and his brother specialize in archaeotech. Good stuff, too. And they control pretty much all the trade around here. His caravan was ambushed less than an hour from here, so I figured whoever was responsible would be long gone and far away by now. Seems not. Meanwhile, there's a few gangs around here who have been trying to make a name for themselves, taking more risks than usual. The Black Serpents, those Escher you met earlier, and a couple of Orlock gangs, the Iron Vipers, the Scrapjacks. So you think they're working for the Silver Talon too? I think they're being awfully bold, almost like someone wants them to make trouble. And since the Silver Talon is still around... And you think it was the Silver Talon who killed Virax? Or ordered it? Yes. Damn! I had a feeling there was something going on from another lead I was As soon as I found out, I came to warn you. But that's how I found you. Not exactly just in time. You don't think? Hmm. That cerebral implant. Where did that come from? I took it from the Black Serpents. Maybe they were just trying to sell it, or maybe it's something that you know who is looking for. Which is why it made so much sense to put it in you. So I guess we'll find out, one way or the other. Saving my life just so you can get me killed? Not my kind of deal. A shame, since it's the only one going. Then I'm out. But thanks for tipping me off about the Silver Talon. If I were a less generous man, I might suggest you're in my debt, you know. But I won't. Now listen, there's a fortune to be made for both of us. You won't get it on your own. Wanna bet? Oh, I'd wager. But if you lose, you'll have nothing left to give me anyway. So just don't forget, the offer's there. And you know where to find me. So I really quite enjoy this uh, Cal Jericho character because the fact that he gave us a bunch of uh, new toys, knowing that it's actually going to put us on somebody's shit list, I think is hilarious. <laughs> That's fantastic. So we are free to go away. Like, he's not calling any favors. He just knows that he's put us in a position where we are better to hang out with him and, and earn money with him than not. Even though it's the Undercity and no one's ever truly safe from anything. So he really is just giving an op us an opportunity and has given us some new toys. So um, we would be stupid not to do business with him. Because, yeah, there's money to be made. And that's basically the only thing to do down here. Especially for a mutie like us. That's right, we're a mutant. Yeah, she knew it. Don't know how. Because, yeah, mutants, not very liked. But. This is neutral ground. You get it? No fighting, no shooting, no threats to kill. Got it. I'm just carrying this gun for a laugh. Don't worry so, about it. The two of you get everything straightened out? You might say that. Listen, I'm looking for a little information. Shoot. The Iron Vipers. Heard of them? Orlock. Yeah. Friends of yours? You might say I used to know a few of them. You know where they hang out these days? I don't, but I know who might. Try the dome runner over there. Jado's his name. Well, all right. Um, down here now. Slide. Yeah, and it's weak. Too bad. I've no reason Jado. to do that. I like yeah. doing it. I'm looking for someone, Jado. They tell me you're the guy to help me find them. Anything within a dozen domes of here. Who? The Iron Vipers. Know them? 
Yeah, I do. They've been making a lot of noise around here lately. Know where I can find them? Not exactly. But I do know they made a move on the Steel Crocs. A Goliath gang, a couple of days ago. They got lucky. Captured the Crocs leader. Is that so? You know what they want with him? No, but they want something from him, all right. The Crocs are out looking for him, so I hear the Vipers are going to try and move him. They control all the transport around here anyway. They control part of an old cargo train network they use for smuggling. My guess is they're going to try moving him out that way. Somewhere the Goliaths will never find him. You know when and where? I can take a guess. You want me to show you? Yeah. Well then, let me light the way. Think you can spot a phosphor beacon? What? Phosphor beacon. But Squad one. His best friend out in the bad zones. I'll lay a trail for you. You dropped your phosphor beacon, mate. All right. So, uh, so this guy is is Down the one who always knows this. where everything is. I'll never eat one of those with the purple dots again. Yeah, purple dots, the worst. Ugh, hate purple dots. So here is where we get our missions from. From this computer. Yeah, that's right. So anyway. So you can see Silver Talon, some of the main, you know, the main bad guys of the piece. Uh, the Palanite Enforcers have a have a huge hit out on him. Uh, well, on them. So it makes a lot of sense, you know. Palanite Enforcers, they're the Enforcers that live in the Hive City above. We're in the Underhive, you see. We're, we're underneath all that hustle and bustle. But occasionally they stick their nose in where they don't belong. So, you know. Also, there are B missions. And A missions and S missions. And also a nice breakdown of all the factions, of which there are many. There are a lot of different factions in this game. I can't wait to see how this all uh, plays out. Because, of course, um, yeah, we got these bars. I don't know if these will turn green as we start filling, um, you know, start sort of filling up uh, our. our uh, I don't know. I don't know what to call it. Our relations with them, I suppose. If this is tracking that or what, I have no idea. Not a clue. It'll be interesting to see how this uh, evolves as we play. But anyway, next up we can have a campaign mission. So we need to go to Coloss 44. The first mission we did, so mission 1, 2. This is literally level 1, 2, 3, 4. Right, it's going to keep going. Um, these aren't a choice of two missions. This is the current one we're on and the one we just did. So rank, class A, that's what we earned when we did it. So um, this is the mission list. So at first, because it was talking about side missions, I thought these were two different missions we could do. And so I ended up trying to do the second, the first mission the second time, which is very confusing. <laughs> but anyway, Colos 44 is what we'll be doing next episode. That's right, it's the end of the episode. Um, so this uh, series, because some of the levels go on quite a while, um, I'm going to just sort of record a bunch and then just split it all up into bite-sized chunks. So we'll try and make sure that every episode starts either with us beginning a mission or midway through a mission, um, you yeah, know, with a mission in progress. And we're going to end every episode with, uh, with this thing you know this area we're gonna make sure that episodes end um with us getting ready to go on our next mission so all of this sort of um in between mission stuff we can hopefully just sort of stick at the end so if people can't be bothered with that and they just want to see the action then you know to use the start of the episode you know makes sense anyway should be convenient for you all and uh, for me because doing one mission per episode um it's gonna be really long episodes i think for for some of them and we can't I can't have that. I've got so many series going on the channel at the moment, so it'd just be a mess. But this is the first episode, so of course it's a little longer. But I'm going to go for a sort of half hour. Um, that's what I'm going to roughly aim for. You know, if there's a better way to split it up, then I'll... I'll yeah, it'll be loose, but you'll you'll see as they come out, I suppose. So, um, yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed this so far. Uh, I'm really intrigued by this game. I think it's really fun. I really like the gunplay, and it's just really fun to play a first-person shooter on the channel for once. It's really interesting. And the fact that there's actually a first-person shooter in the Warhammer 40k universe that, you know, isn't years, years old. Brilliant. Like, I don't know how these aren't coming out, like, ten of them a year, because it's just such an obvious setting for, uh, for first-person shooters. Like, it's just so obvious. I don't know why more studios aren't doing this. It's really bizarre. So here we are. Finally, we got one, which is, uh, yeah, which is good so far. So... Praise the Omnisire, I suppose. So, uh, yeah, also, uh, this might be available on my Nexus store. I don't know. Uh, Nexus has been a bit rubbish at telling me 
um, correctly when games are going to be available on my store. But if you want other Warhammer titles, um, go to uh, nexus.gg slash Janet, and this one might be on it. That's as much as I can say, because... I keep getting told things will be available and they're not, so I, I don't know what to tell you guys, but if you're interested in buying it, just do me the courtesy of checking to see if you can get your Steam key from uh, from me, because I get a commission, it doesn't cost you anything extra. So, it's a good system. Provided it's actually on there. Ugh, I know, I know. Business, right? So anyway, uh, comment, like, subscribe, and uh, take care of yourselves. I'll see you in the next episode. Take care, guys. Have a good one.